Welcome back fellow gardeners, welcome back to my channel. Today I am totally excited. We're off at the moment, we're going to see a very, very close friend of ours called Teddy Kinanjui. He's involved in the reforestation of the drylands in Kenya. And I want him to talk to us and explain about how he uses these amazing seed balls that he makes out of charcoal. And within the seed balls, he puts acacia seeds and then uses the community to help him spread these seeds just before the rains. And with the result is that a lot of reforestation is happening. The other thing that Teddy is going to talk to us about is how he uses the charcoal dust and uses it in compost making and introducing it in agriculture, which I think is really amazing. So he's going to talk to us about that. So I'm really excited. So what we're doing with these two episodes, uh, with these episodes on Teddy, is we're dividing it into a part one and a part two. The first part being the seed balls, and the second part is using the uh, charcoal dust in agriculture. So my name is Alice and I'm the Red Soul Gardener. Let's go and see Teddy. Here we are with Teddy. Now we're going to look at the seed balls and we've talked about it in the introduction. The beautiful thing about these seed balls is that he's working with the community and reforesting a lot of the dry areas and he's going to tell us more about it. Cool, thanks. Yes, yes. So the seed ball concept we came up with a few years ago. Oh. So with our main business being energy saving stoves and barbecues and yes. ovens that use charcoal, mm. we realized even with efficiency, we still have to grow more charcoal for the future. Yes. Plus, we also have to plant more of what was cut down for the last hundred years. Yeah, which makes so, sense. Which makes yeah. sense, yeah. yeah. So for the longest time, we'd been doing that traditional style of tree planting. And what we found though is there's not very much information on how do you grow trees, indigenous Kenyan trees, in the dry parts of Kenya, yeah. where most of the charcoal is coming from anyway. So in the early 2000s, in partnership with us and the Carnivore Restaurant, because mm -hmm. they use charcoal for barbecues, course, barbecues. Uh, my dad and the uh, owner there, Martin Dunford, we got very excited about, okay, yeah. how do we actually grow a bag of charcoal? What are the agronomics behind it? You know, you know, if you're a tomato farmer, it takes this long, your yeah. yield will be yeah, this yeah, much. Yeah. That's not really known with dry land indigenous trees. Mm -hmm. Most of the forestry in Kenya is what we sort of call colonial style forestry in a way, you know, very straight lines of exotic pine, cypress, eucalyptus okay. trees yeah. planted in the highlands. Mm. There hasn't been very much research done into indigenous trees, mm. especially in dry land areas. So when we started doing these experiments, you know, there's so much info out there. Some people said, if you plant a tree, you have to do a square hole, uh, three feet by three feet. Other okay. people said, no, 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 no. You have to do a round hole, no chicken manure, no goat's manure. So, okay, fine. So we started doing all these different trials mm. on how best and how cheapest to grow trees in dry land parts of Kenya. Mm. We found typically it costs about 150, 200 shillings over 10 years okay. to get a tree that's big enough that you yeah. can cut the branches off yeah. to make a bag of charcoal. Yeah. Um, the seed balls concept came around though when we then started doing some planting contracts with people. Mm -hmm. So you might have five acres of land, want trees on it, you'd hire us, we'd go dig the holes, mm. buy the seedlings. So I was doing that on the side of the road near Mololongo, just past the airport on okay. the highway. Mm -hmm. And you know, this tree seedling was 25 shillings. Digging the hole was 10 bob, um, watering it another 10 bob. And I remember that season specifically because the truck got stuck in the mud bringing the seedlings. Because yeah. you know, you're waiting for the rains to start <laughs> planting. Wilt. And then it starts raining and yeah. then you can't actually oh, get okay. to the site because yeah. yeah. the mud is completely everywhere. Yeah. So anyway, there are all these challenges with the logistics, the cost, the transportation. Mm. And I remember noticing on the other side of the fence, on the side of the highway, on the road reserve, there are all these people who are hired to keep it clear and he's yeah. slashing away and he started struggling with something. And I remember looking and realizing he's cutting down exactly the same type of tree seedling that we're paying someone to grow two meters away. Yeah. So how is it this thing is growing like a weed just over here and we're using plastic yeah. bags and jambes and shovels and, and all consuming. this time. Yeah. And that got me thinking, well, of course, yeah. where did all the trees come from in Kenya to begin with? It's a lucky seed that mm. fell off a tree in the right place in the mm -hmm. right time is mm -hmm. able to germinate and grow. So, you know, I'm very excited about it. So I went and bought all of these bare seeds from KEFRI, the Kenya Forest okay. Research Institute mm -hmm. up in Moguga, who have been mm. huge supporters, very helpful 
uh, organization to work with and bought all these seeds, threw them all out on a little farm outside of town to test and see what mm. would happen, and the rains failed. And so, of course, a lot of seed, yeah. indigenous tree seeds, is food yeah. for all sorts of animals. Yes. Your squirrels, mm. your guinea fowl, your mice, all of that sort of thing. So we realized, okay, we're going to be feeding all the birds. You have two sort of options. Either throw out so many seeds that they can't eat all of the seeds mm. you throw out, which is very expensive, mm. or find a natural way of coating the seeds. So that led me back to my business partner, Elsin Karstad, who mm. runs Tam Feeds Limited. Okay. And he's a really good inventor, mm. loves coming up with cool ideas mm. and machines. Mm. So we started discussing it. Could we use this waste charcoal dust from long dead trees that have been made into charcoal, brought into Nairobi? How could we use that dust to coat the outside of seeds? Because nothing really eats charcoal in the wild. Mm. It doesn't have any nutrient value, mm. um, doesn't taste good. Most things, you know, they look at it, walk past. So we started doing these experiments of how do you coat seeds with charcoal dust, found the perfect mix, and then he invented this machine that's able to now make about a ton, so just over half a million coated seeds per day of so the seed balls. So this is actually made in that machine? So this is now made in that machine. Oh. And so what it is, is basically, okay. as the word says, a seed in a ball. Yeah. And so we tree seeds will have one seed per ball, okay. but we're also doing dryland grass seeds because, of course, oh, yeah. a lot of Kenya is not mm. forest. It's mm. wild savannas and grazing. Mm. So grass seeds are very small. You'll have three or four seeds per ball. Most tree seeds, you'll have one seed. And then we realized, okay, well, what type of trees and what types of grasses will we use? So the trees were actually very straightforward. We just mm. said, let's work backwards on whatever people are cutting down. Okay. So if you live in Voi and they're cutting acacia tortillas, grows there naturally, people are overexploiting it, grow more of the same thing. Yeah. If you live in Naivasha and they're so, cutting down that yeah. yellow bark Naivasha tree that mm -hmm. grows there wild, grow more of the same thing. So that's helped really streamline choosing which type of tree goes to where. Mm -hmm. Just use what already naturally grows in that environment. Mm -hmm. Our focus has really been on the dry lands because it's oftentimes forgotten in a lot of restoration programs. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of wonderful work in Kenya happening in Mount Kenya, Abedares, the mm -hmm. Mao. Mm -hmm. But most of the charcoal produced for the cities comes from dry areas in Kenya. Mm -hmm. And it's very difficult to do successful tree growing in those locations. In some places, water availability is yeah. a huge stress. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe the households, people are carrying water on their back, and to ask them to carry water to pour on oh, a seedling, yeah, no, you know, it sucks. Or yeah. if you're driving past with a water bowser of mm. clean water, and they don't even have drinking water in their village, the, you know, there's, people don't like this thing of, why not us? You know, yeah. how is that tree more important? Well, um, and there are a lot of other challenges. Distance, places mm -hmm. are far away, bad roads, bad access. Um, especially the rains not being very consistent. This happened with us planting in Narok a few times. Mm -hmm. Get all the trees in the ground, it all looks great, and, and the rain, rain stop. Yeah. And then you pay for watering the trees, yeah. you know. So we realized, okay, this is a very interesting option for being able to build in seed distribution mm -hmm. on maybe you're visiting your grandma in Voy for the weekend. You can take seeds with you, even if it's not raining. Yeah. You can go distribute them all out there. They'll sit there patiently waiting for the rain to come. All the mice, the birds will walk right yeah. past it. Yeah. No idea there's yeah. a seed in there. Once it rains enough, it washes away the biochar coating and then the seed is back into its natural state. So can I ask a question? Is that once you have your seed ball, can you just keep it for a long time without using it? I mean, it mm -hmm. doesn't disintegrate or no. Lose the value. seed ball, yeah, the seed so ball stays. The seed ball stays the same, and then the choice of species we're using. Almost all of those trees mm -hmm. are specialists in being dormant. So, with the dry land areas, you have the type of seed that's known as orthodox seed, mm. which means that it's able to survive for long periods of mm -hmm. dormancy without needing refrigeration. So ah. some species of trees you have to keep under 2 Celsius or whatever. Okay. Those wouldn't work for seed yeah. balls. But a lot of the acacias and the dryland specialists, yeah. just because of the vagaries of water, you can have a really good rainy season. All the seeds produce, trees produce loads of seeds. They drop, but then maybe but then next year the rain isn't so good. Yeah. So you want your offspring in a way to be able to, you know, to hedge survive. bets yeah. over five yeah. years. There'll yeah. be a really good rainy yeah. season happening. Um, again, a lot of the seeds that are come directly off of trees already have little insects or beetle larvae yeah, eating yeah, yeah. them. Because mm -hmm. if you know a tree produces a million seeds, mm. why aren't there millions of trees everywhere? Why mm. do we even have this mm. problem? Because a lot of seed is food for so many animals. Yes. So one benefit of working with Kefri is they do that step of cleaning all of the seed and getting seed that doesn't have doo -doo, bug damage, whatever stuff in it. In yeah. it. Yeah. 
Okay, but just tell me, you have you. all these oh, different types of acacias here. Mm -hmm. Senegal, Senegal mm -hmm. Nilotica, oh, well, what totally. are they? Uh, so sort of... each of these different acacias will be specialists for different parts of the country. Ah. So again, like this Sayal is a very common one in somewhere like Rumaruti, you'd find it. Okay. So if a customer calls us and says, I'd like to order a 25 kilo bag of seed balls, ah, I need to I redo my farm, really good, yeah. we'll say, well, where are you growing them? And if they don't know the type so well, I'll say, well, I know Rumaruti. Yeah. This is one that not only grows there, but is being overexploited. Uh -huh. And that to us is a very key definition of which type goes to which area. Okay. Which ones are really being targeted for firewood, for charcoal, for building posts, whatever it is, mm -hmm. and grows there naturally. Interesting. And the same thing then happens with the grass seeds. So we have oh, two different types seeds. of grasses. Yeah. Let's see that a little bit better from there. Two different types of indigenous, three types of indigenous grasses. Yeah. And what happens in a lot of landscapes are all three of these. If you're a cow, these are basically ice cream. These are the most delicious grass oh, you'll yeah. ever eat. So now, of course, they eat it, they eat it, they eat it. They never okay. go back to seed. Yeah. So after many years, you start missing some of these species oh. in that landscape. So being able to bring back in new type, the same type that used to be there yes. or is still there, but in small numbers, that's very palatable is really good for especially livestock owners, who is most of Kenya. Yeah. And of course us as a Jiko business, yeah. we sell barbecues, so we want sustainable charcoal and we'd like yeah. to see fat cows. No, I, I, <laughs> of exactly. That's got the livestock good. But tell me, so do you have a lot of orders? Do people go up, uh, you know, come here and order and then you mm -hmm. sort of send it up to whichever area they're Yeah, they're so we have a lot of online orders. It's yeah. been very handy with Kenya with mobile money, M-Pesa. Yeah. You can order your bag of seeds. It can be put on a courier or a bus or a oh. motorbike, whatever it gets sent to all over Kenya. We've yeah. done a little bit of work outside of Kenya. Mm -hmm. um, there's a bit more paperwork with the permits for transporting okay, seeds across transport, borders. Yeah. And we also always feel like our backyard is still far from mm. perfect. So why run off to Ivory Coast or whatever, you know? And then you also involve the community. You involve children, uh, what do you call it, school kids with the catapult. Mm -hmm. Yeah, with things Tell like the slingshots Tell us more about that because stuff. I just love Ooh. that idea. Um, yeah, I so this has this. been a really yeah. fun thing with the whole yeah. seed ball side of it is how do you make environmentalism and doing things like tree planting more fun yeah because like at least when i was a kid in school tree planting was punishment if you yeah. did something wrong yeah. you had to carry yeah. buckets of water yeah. you know yeah and i remember feeling like an 11 year old boy thinking yeah. this tree is really giving me a yeah, hard time stressed. you know yeah. and that's like the wrong message completely yeah. you want to give to kids so we started realizing things like doing stuff like slingshots yeah they're really fun you want yeah. to do it the whole afternoon it very much mimics natural random distribution yeah. of a bird pooping out a seed somewhere yeah. So things like slingshots are great. We've worked with a couple of schools who've even come up with things like old um, water containers that sit on a camel. And when the camel's walking, it yeah, drops out that. seeds oh, one by that. one, yeah, all that. the way up to working with pilots yeah. in helicopters and airplanes who are able to do aerial seeding. And so that's a really cool side of it for those really far away places. Mm -hmm. There's sort of two options of doing that. We've worked with one guy who has a... Uh, agricultural airplane that they mm. usually use for spraying, you know, fertilizer mm, or whatever. Mm. And he can pick out, you know, down to five centimeter accuracy, uh, drop two and a half tons of seed, Amazing. you know, a million seeds in yeah. about an hour. And yeah. you were talking about, as we were driving here, is I was pointing out some of those acacias along, mm -hmm. uh, along the, the road in the estate and you actually just walk and drop the seeds there. Yeah, and that's been through dog lovely. walking in the yeah. afternoon. So yeah. every time I go on a yeah. dog walk, I'll take a little pocket of seeds yeah. and then just throw them Sprinkle. out bit by bit. Yeah. Um, especially in the States though, where they're overzealous gardeners who want everything to be a manicured yes. lawn. Uh, definitely talking with people is really yeah. nice. And it's a good place to kick off a conversation. Yeah. You know, like this is scary at the end of the way. Yeah. You see them sitting in the blazing hot sunlight cool and saying you can grow your own shade you can yeah. actually look after this yeah. little tree and in a year or two yeah. you will have you shade have in the shade. afternoon you yeah. know and that's such an interesting interaction with people to then yeah. look back at and you and the scary are like yeah. look at the tree that we yeah. both grew yeah. you know yeah i love that idea <laughs> oh and then we also so, do yeah like wedding so favor ones and stuff and corporate gifts because it's oh, a very nice yeah. thing you know imagine going to a meeting about climate change and everyone's yes. given a hat and a flash drive yeah it's like actually give people some trees they can go home and grow a tree in their own where they live yeah so and these have been wonderful do doing from birthdays to yeah. weddings to big corporate drives and stuff yeah. And also for kids, I've started my mm. little seed balls, by the way. Oh, good, excellent. But I think even for children, giving them this, it's yeah. then in the way a birthday party or whatever. they can actually 
start Growing doing something. Down. Yeah. Because yeah. a lot with an environmentalism usually it seems for a lot of people yeah. that you're just being told no. Don't yeah. do this. Don't yeah. do that. Don't yeah. do. And you know, most human beings are told no enough in your life. Yeah. It's yeah, nice yeah, to absolutely. be encouraged to go do something no, fun. No, I think it's a, it's a very positive move. Yeah. Thanks. So thank you so much, for, uh, Teddy. We've got so much knowledge. I mean, thank we you. started off and then I think now we really truly understand what you're doing and you're doing a fantastic job and I'm very proud of you, yeah? Yeah, likewise. Yeah. And yeah. thank you very much, yeah. Alice. Yeah. And I love your channel. Yeah, no, thank you very much. Yeah. So, fellow gardeners, thank you so much and thank you for being with us in these two episodes. Uh, don't forget to like and share and press that notification button and subscribe to our channel. We're on Instagram, Facebook, and do send me your comments. And once again, thank you so much, Teddy. We've learned so much. Thanks You're very so welcome. Much. Yeah. yeah, thanks, thanks Alice. Yeah. <laughs>